With the introduction of the Canon R5 and the R6, and even the Sony A7S III, a lot of filmmakers were introduced with the H.265 slash HEVC codex. Now up to this point, most cameras have been shooting H.264, and this is what computers are used to. But with these H.265 files, computers really aren't aware of how to edit it. And that's where a lot of problems came. What is going on guys? Chris here, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, consider subscribing. My goal for 2021 is to reach 5,000 subscribers, that's really steep the more that I say that, but whatever, let's see if we can get there. I'm shooting on a Canon R6 in H.265. I used to be editing on a 15 inch MacBook Pro from I think about the year 2015. It was maxed out in specs and it cost like over $3,000. And for every camera I used up until now, it was working perfectly fine. The processor was very fast and I had a it had 16 gigs of RAM, it had everything you would need to edit properly, especially with 4K video. But then when I got the Canon R6, I was just unable to scrub through the timeline. It was so frustrating. I didn't understand why my computer up until then had been able to edit any kind of 4K I'd throw at it with the GH5, the A7S II, the Canon EOS R. And then I did a little bit of research and watched a lot of YouTube videos and I realized that it had to do with the codec, the H.265 10 bit that comes out of this camera Computers just aren't ready to edit that. And it raised the question why Canon would come out with a camera that would shoot in a codec that computers couldn't really edit. So basically what I had to do is I had to transcode all my video and it was just a frustrating process because I couldn't just film a video and then start editing. And then along came Apple to save the day. Now I've heard people say they've been able to edit R6 files on older Mac. I just haven't had that experience. So along came the M1 MacBooks. Uh, so there was the M1 Mac Mini, the M1 MacBook Pro, and the M1 MacBook Air. Now all three of these computers can easily edit the R5 and R6 files. And when I mean easily, I mean the fan doesn't even turn on. I have, wait, right back here. This is a project I've been editing with the Canon R6. It's for a client, it's a dance video shot all in 4K60. Now before I owned this computer, prior to being able to edit at all, as soon as I would upload, I'd have to either convert into proxies or transcode. But now I don't. I just put it into the timeline and it plays super smoothly and it's really fantastic. The only thing hindering my performance now is the fact that I'm editing off an old hard drive. So yeah, I definitely need to switch over to SSDs. But for the moment, this is just an amazing experience. I can scrub through the timeline without any struggle and, and playback is just perfect. And I believe this is the case with Final Cut Pro and Premiere. Now, I'm a Final Cut Pro user. I've been using it for seven, eight years now and I know it's ins and outs. And it was just such a struggle editing the H.265 files on my previous Mac I would have to import all the footage, then transcode it, which would take hours and hours and hours. So this M1 MacBook Pro has just been an amazing investment for me. And it's so strange because the price of this is less than half of what I paid well, not really. Close to half of what I paid for my previous MacBook Pro. And that said, you can even get the $1,000, $999 MacBook Air and get pretty much identical performance. The reason I opted for the MacBook Pro is that it had built-in fans for longer editing sessions, but what I've realized is even if I edit for five, 10 hours, the fans don't even turn on. Granted, I don't do a lot of graphic work and a lot of special effects, but still, that is an amazing thing. So for vlogs like this, it's just awesome. Awesome. So yeah, the 999 MacBook Air performs pretty much identically to the MacBook Pro. So if you want to save a little bit of money, yes, you don't get as great battery life and you don't have the fans, but still the quality of and the performance of the computer is pretty much identical, as I said. And actually, I want to go back on that, the battery life. This is this MacBook Pro has 20 hours of battery life. And the fact that I can edit this 4K 60 video for hours without having to plug it in is so amazing. Take my computer anywhere, I can go to a cafe, I can go uh, even on the planes for a long plane ride. For my previous MacBook Pro, I'd always have to bring my charger and sometimes I wouldn't find an outlet and within 15, 30 minutes, it would just be completely dead. But with this, I can go anywhere and edit at any time and it's just an amazing experience. And the fact that it's smaller, like I had the 15 inch and I like the big screen, but I, don't re I didn't realize how much I would like a smaller screen. The 13 inch MacBook Pro is small enough so that it feels way lighter and way more portable while the screen size only loses a couple inches. Having the touch bar is kind of cool. I find it a little gimmicky and I don't really see the pros of having it. 
Uh, yeah, there are some quirky things you can do like scrubbing through your timeline or quickly like raising your brightness and all that but I just feel like that the physical buttons would have done the same thing. I do like the touch ID though that is something cool I like just quickly waking up my computer that way. So yeah this purchase this experience is just amazing and it makes me want to get back into making videos wanting to editing as I've kind of been droughted I've kind of lost my desire to make videos just because of the transcoding process with my previous MacBook, not to mention the fans would kick on like super loud if I was editing and ugh, it was just horrible. So this is an amazing purchase. If you guys uh, have an R5 or an R6 or an A7S III or any camera that shoots H.265, you really need to look into the M1 Max. They are an amazing purchase and I couldn't recommend this enough. For the price, they are crazy. And the weird thing, now that I think about it, is that Apple still sells the older Intel processor Max and still for a higher price. So I don't really see why they're doing that. If you know, leave a comment down below. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what I have to say about these M1 MacBook Pros. They've been fantastic. Highly, highly recommended. If you want to purchase it on Amazon, I'll put a link down in the description. You can purchase it through there. So that pretty much wraps it up though for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.